Hello and welcome to this uh, Edutech talk for 2021. My name is Ben Cleveland. I'm a senior lecturer in the Faculty of Architecture, Building and Planning at the University of Melbourne uh, and the chief investigator for uh, a research project uh, titled Building Connections, Schools and Community Hubs, which will be the topic uh, of this uh, presentation today. Uh, a research project looking at how uh, infrastructure can play an important role in connecting schools and communities uh, and a project supported by uh, a range of uh, government and industry partners as you can see uh, listed across the bottom of this cover slide. As mentioned, uh, we're very uh, grateful for the Australian Research Council support through their Linkage Project Scheme uh, and also to our partners who have uh, jointly uh, funded this three-year uh, research project. I should also uh, recognise the role of our research group, uh, the Learning Environment Supplied Research Network, or LEARN, uh, a, a unique uh, collaboration between our Faculty of Architecture, Building and Planning and the Melbourne Graduate School of Education. Uh, this project is situated uh, within the work of that group. And the Building Connection Schools as Community Hubs uh, research project uh, follows uh, a number of other projects that our LEARN group uh, have undertaken under the Australian Research Council Linkage Project Scheme, uh, all looking at various uh, facets and issues uh, associated with the role of the built environment and education. Uh, the most recent uh, prior to this one being the Innovative Learning Environments and Teacher Change Project, of which many of you will hopefully have heard, uh, and others including E20MLE, focused on evaluating learning environments, future-proofing schools, looking at modular school design, and smart green schools, which was about not only the sustainable design of schools, but also uh, their pedagogical design as well. So what is the Building Connections project all about? Well, the stated aim of the project is as follows. This project will investigate how best to plan, design, govern, and manage facilities to enable schools to operate successfully as more than a school and encourage the development of thriving, resilient, and connected communities. To give you a better idea of uh, what this objective looks like uh, in process and also in outcomes, uh, what I intend to do is to um, talk about three things. One, some exemplars that are paving the way for um, school and community connections in terms of the role of facilities. Two, uh, some findings um, from uh, a national and international workshops that we've been running uh, over the last year. Uh, and also just to introduce you to uh, a nationwide survey we're conducting titled Connecting Schools and Community Survey. Schools operating as community hubs are often very uh, closely aligned with the requirements of their local communities. We often refer to these operations as being place-based, that is that they emerge from the needs of their local communities. Uh, and so they, they often um, uh, are very contextualised and specific um, to the needs of the, the local residents and the school population um, as well. By way of introducing uh, the concept here to those who may be slightly unfamiliar, uh, and also to just talk about some of the, um, the recent exemplars which are being created uh, across the country, I wanted to talk about this um, project, uh, the Coralyn Birley Family Centre not in terms of necessarily the facilities, of course, they play an important role, but also in terms of the partnerships which have led to the development um, of this facility uh, in order to provide a range of services to families uh, and the community in the Karayo area of Geelong. As is becoming abundantly clear through the research we've been undertaking, uh, the role of partnerships is critical to uh, uh, offering uh, additional services and activities to local communities to support their, their development. Um, and in this case, at the Coral and Birrelee uh, Family and Community Place in, in Geelong, Victoria, um, there's a number of uh, very important stakeholder partners involved. Uh, namely, uh, Northern Bay Peter 12 College, uh, which is an existing school with multiple campuses uh, and, and the new community hub is um, directly linked into that school. Uh, Our Place, um, an organisation uh, with uh, a philanthropic backer of the Coleman Foundation, which has been actively uh, working to scale up uh, community hub activity uh, in multiple schools across the state of Victoria, uh, originating from Doveton College uh, in Melbourne's uh, outer southeastern suburbs. Of course, uh, the state of Victoria through their um, Department of Education and Training, uh, and very importantly, the local uh, government of the greater city of Geelong. 
Here in this image, you can see the situation of the new centre uh, directly adjoining uh, the existing school, uh, and not only adjoining the campus, but also providing a gateway through that, that, that front door, which you can see in the, the, the lower left, um, enabling all who wish to, to pass through the centre to become familiar with what goes on there uh, and to feel like uh, the, the Curl and Birley Family Centre uh, and this campus in particular of Northern Bay College uh, have a very strong and integrated relationship. While the school behind uh, offers education to school age students, uh, the Family Centre offers a range uh, of uh, services to children and families um, in early childhood and family support. These include long daycare for children, uh, kindergarten, maternal and child health, playgroups and parenting programs, uh, a range of uh, consultation rooms are used by uh, allied health and other medical practitioners. Uh, they also have specialist family support programs, a toy library and a parent lounge, which enables uh, parents to connect uh, and, and develop uh, social capital. In many ways, uh, this centre uh, offers uh, a view to the future of the integration of early years and family services with schools uh, and demonstrates how the role of facilities, um, not only co-located, but indeed integrated uh, with the schools, um, can play a leading role in supporting uh, community development, particularly uh, in underprivileged um, areas around the country. The idea and development of schools as community hubs is by no means uh, a new concept. Uh, it's something which uh, has a long history, uh, not only in Australia, uh, where it's now gaining uh, increased momentum, but also uh, elsewhere around the world. And as a research group, we were very keen to investigate uh, how the concept of schools as community hubs was currently being developed uh, and the histories behind those developments. Over the past few months, we've been fortunate to connect with uh, a range of truly expert um, people from uh, North America, uh, including uh, people from a whole range of leading universities, as you can see listed here, and also organisations which champion the idea of um, community schools and schools as community hubs, including the National Centre for Community Schools and the Coalition for Community Schools. Uh, these groups uh, represented uh, multiple states across the USA uh, and also um, various locations across Canada. We also ventured via Zoom, uh, being uh, stuck in Australia due to the pandemic, um, into the UK and, and Europe as well, and spoke to other experts from those parts of the world. Uh, again, you can see some of the organisations, some of the, the universities who, um, who have experts in these areas and who we were able to connect with. Our conversations with these expert people in uh, North America and the UK and Europe uh, revolved initially around what would contribute to success. We wanted to know what success looked like and how that could be understood. We wanted to know who should be around the table, which stakeholders um, have contributed to their successful development of community schools and schools community hubs. And then we wanted to dive into some more specific issues uh, related to policy, education program development, community services and program development, governance structures, which are all very, very important in the ongoing uh, operation and management of these uh, arrangements. Uh, facility planning, design and construction, of course, that being the, the, sort of the, the, the central uh, piece of the puzzle that we're trying to understand through this research into the role of the built environment in all of this. Facility management, financial management, uh, and issues surrounding the ongoing operation uh, of schools as community hubs. We also wanted to understand the barriers that uh, have had to be overcome in order to, to bring these projects into reality, uh, both uh, in recent years and also in the past. And so we asked questions about, you know, what barriers are commonly encountered uh, and, and therefore must be navigated. Uh, the type of information that people found useful, the kinds of data, the kinds of uh, uh, information which assisted with um, productive decision making. And lastly, we wanted to understand from all of the work that these people had done, what were the lessons learned that they believed that they could pass on uh, to help others uh, templing uh, very similar and very complex projects uh, in other parts of the world. 
So it's not possible to go through all that we discovered uh, through this workshop series. Um, however, some of the highlights here I'll, I'll just mention. Uh, from the, those in North America who we spoke to, they talked a lot about uh, intentional organisations and the intentionality, the, the mission, the goal being incredibly important to pursuing uh, productive schools community uh, projects and delivering impact and outcomes for the communities that they are wishing to serve. They also talked about engaging a broad group of stakeholders um, and the importance of demonstrating the value um, of a community hub school to those uh, in the local area and further afield uh, and really bringing those people in and getting them interested and generating those all important partnerships. The critical role of the program coordinator that is someone who's following up on that intentional uh, 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 set of objectives and someone mentioned the idea of going beyond random acts of programming not just doing things because um, they seem like a nice thing to do, but really intentionally uh, undertaking uh, uh, the design uh, and implementation of new programs to meet specific goals. They also mentioned the longer term issue of uh, university teacher training uh, and also administrator education programs and, and helping people think through uh, how operating more than a school um, can really contribute not only to the community as a whole, but also to the education of the students who are there. They're still their, their, their core purpose um, of uh, supporting their education. And lastly, particularly interesting in the United States, uh, the issue of safety and security uh, was mentioned, but very much um, with a caveat of schools still being inviting places, having inviting facilities uh, and offering that ability to connect and not to provide you know, a fortress uh, around which uh, those in the community feel excluded. And related insights from, from both the UK and, and also from continental Europe. Um, here we spoke to people um, from England, from Scotland, um, from Germany, from Denmark, uh, and other places uh, around uh, that part of the world also. They, they stress the importance of when generating uh, these projects, uh, and seeking to create uh, a new school as community hub arrangement that a relationship broker or a facilitator, a skilled person uh, who can bring people into deliberative processes uh, and, and create uh, a sense of partnership and shared purpose was absolutely critical to getting these projects off the ground. Uh, they stressed the importance of local government involvement uh, and uh, recognising that uh, many of the services which will be provided are often uh, local government uh, service provision. Um, and we learnt very much, even though we'd been reading about it uh, and uh, were aware uh, of the fact that Denmark is very much leading the way. In part, it seems, uh, because their local government arrangements uh, are such that across the 97 local government areas uh, in that country, they own all of the schools and they also deliver all of the services, both education and family and community services as well. And so they very much see the facilities uh, and the school not only as a place for uh, school age student education, but for all sorts of uh, community programs and services as well. So in terms of publications, which we're pushing out to make uh, this information available to others, um, we have yet to actually document our um, North America and, and UK Europe workshops. That'll be workshop two and three, and they are uh, very much under production and will soon be available uh, on our um, project website. Uh, the URL will be given later. Um, but an earlier workshop where we collected uh, similar insights in the Australian context um, has been distilled uh, into the document you can see here. And for those of you who are interested, um, it's very much accessible through our website. For those of you interested in reading further about uh, these issues, uh, we also have published uh, a conference proceedings uh, for a conference we ran at the end of 2020 uh, with 130 delegates from around the world. Um, and it is divided into four sections. Um, schools at the heart of urban development, connecting with the early years, partnering for better community outcomes and enabling uh, community hubs. Uh, and all of the, uh, the, the, pres the presentations uh, that were given during the conference, uh, there are full paper versions of what was um, spoken about uh, and you're very welcome also to download that from our website.
So as we pass the midway point of our uh, research project, we're starting to think about uh, how what we've learnt um, can inform the future and considering the question of what's the future for schools as community hubs in Australia. Perhaps heightened by the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, it seems obvious that uh, providing additional supports, not only for students, but for families and other community members um, through schools and in and around schools uh, is something which should increasingly happen. Um, supporting people's well-being, their mental health and their physical health as well. Yet identifying the reasons why you might do this is probably the easy part. The more challenging aspect to this is how can you bring these things uh, to fruition uh, and how can they become uh, not only implemented but sustained over time. So keeping in mind that trajectory of developing, implementing and sustaining schools community hubs, we felt that there was uh, perhaps a, a, a large uh, uh, project or sub-project that we needed to undertake. And that is a national survey of what's currently happening uh, in terms of schools operating as community hubs around Australia. So in order to answer that question around what's the future of schools as community hubs around Australia, we felt that we needed to understand exactly what was going on now uh, across the country. And so in the very, very near future, we'll be disseminating uh, a survey um, across all states and territories uh, titled Connecting Schools and Community Survey. It'll be the first of its kind in Australia. No one's attempted to investigate these issues at such scale before. And what we're seeking is insights into operationalising school and community relationships and partnerships with a focus on the following, the planning, the programming, the designing, the governing, the managing, and ultimately the evaluating to tell us what's working and what's not. So we encourage you to, um, to, to participate in this survey. For those of you who are in school leadership positions, we hope that this survey will find its way to you via official channels um, and also to encourage others to contribute to this, what we feel is really important work um, so that we can get a really good idea of what's happening now uh, and what needs to happen into the future. And so some of the activities that I've uh, talked through today uh, will be contributing to the ultimate objective of this research project, which is to still all that we've learned around policy, around planning, around partnerships, and the many, many other factors that are contributing uh, to the success of schools and community hubs, and to distill all of that uh, into what we're describing as a development framework for schools as community hubs. This is a, 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 a series of documents uh, and other uh, media which we hope will encourage and support and provide guidance um, to those wishing to, uh, to engage in these complex projects uh, and to do so from a well-informed position. And that's what this project's all about, providing the information and the data that can inform um, active and productive decision making when it comes to thinking about uh, more than a school operations. So thank you for listening to this presentation. I hope that uh, it may have uh, heightened your interest in more than a school operation uh, and thinking about the role of facilities in providing venues for all of those uh, relationships and partnerships which schools inevitably wish to generate. Uh, finally, I just want to thank our research team um, at the University of Melbourne and also RMIT University um, who have been doing a tremendous job um, of investigating a huge range of issues, many of which I have not even touched on in this talk. Uh, and particularly, uh, best wishes to our PhD cohort, um, Natalie, Carolina, Haley, and Rob, um, who are all very much into their studies and we hope will bear um, some incredible insights over the coming couple of years. Thank you.